very excited, but I'm in a very 70s mellow mood, you know, just another you breath. You know, officer, I've just been, I've been walking most of the day, you know, I just got in the car in the last five minutes. Uh, I think I hear something calling me, it's those agaves out in the field. Oh, I'm just getting hired and hired. Welcome, everybody, to the great Tequila Whisperer, Tequila Sunrise Spectacular. Thank you for coming. I want to introduce you all to my very special guest. This is the Barfly, Jeff Burkhart, mixologist extraordinaire. Thank you so much for coming on the Tequila Whisperer show, Jim. Well, thanks for having me. This is a great opportunity. I'm glad to be here. I love your show. You know, it's always, I, and I love tequila. Did I mention that? Have I mentioned that? Yeah, okay. uh, Mention away. <laughs> it's very good. Everybody's going, hola, Jeff. Yeah, I got to tell you um, a little background on uh, the Barfly. Jeff writes uh, a regular column in our local paper, but it's also syndicated all through the net. And uh, I'll give you the, um, uh, the, uh, the website address now. It's jeffburkhart.net that's b-u-r-k h-a-r-t dot net I'll give it to you again later in the show so Jeff's got a, a lot of his uh, wonderful writings on there and the fun thing about the way Jeff writes is um, he's he writes it uh, from the, the point of view of an anonymous bartender and he's giving you you know, very personal and very embarrassing stories from the barman's side of the bar. And it's it's incredible. You know, every week I was reading this stuff and when I finally met Jeff and I said, geez, man, I thought you were bigger. I don't know why. You know, I thought of you like this big Warner Brothers cartoon guy, like a, a barman with an apron and sleeves rolling, kind of like a butcher. I don't know why the hell I thought this guy should be a butcher. I think it's the way you write. Like I get older all the time, too. Yeah, People think you, I should be older. I think and you, also have a, you have an attitude of um, complete uh, of observation and knowing when you're seeing these customers and all of the crazy stuff that happens on the other side of the bar. I mean, you, it's great. You're going to want to read Jeff's pieces because they're, uh, they're beautiful, short, entertaining, and... Um, they really get, I, I like them because they're completely um, psycho. Yeah. You know, you, you're seeing the human condition. Oh yeah, unadulterated, right there in front of you. Unadulterated. It's amazing how people, what people will do when someone's standing two feet away and not have any idea that they're right there. Listening to You've told me say. this, yeah. so people will, will, will be uh, giving very intimate secrets to their partner, their, their best new friend of the evening. Yes. And then they start to get very intimate, and right. they think you can't see, even right. though you're about this close to them right. the whole night. Right. But then they think you can't hear. Right. I'm just a piece of furniture. So remember no. that. Um, I remember that people. When you, next time you go to uh, you go to a bar, and the barman is what pretending like he's cleaning glasses, right, right. Uh, but really, you know, you can hear everything. You he can hear everything you say. All right. So um, one thing a, yeah. a friend of mine did point out about Barfly, and I thought was a great, uh, I really enjoyed, was she said, you're incredibly vague, but frighteningly specific, <laughs> which, uh, which I really enjoyed, because I try yeah. and do that, pinpoint the details yeah. that, that make the most sense, you know, and uh, that, are, that resonate throughout everything. It's not just what happens in my bar, but these things happen in every bar, everywhere. And that's great. That, that's actually very true. That, that's a really good descriptor, because, yeah, you can relate to, and the, the funny thing also about reading your pieces is I feel like damn, I wish I would have been there. Like, I wanted to see that thing that you saw. Yeah. You really take us there in a great way. So I've been a fan of Jeff's writing for years here. And Move um, into the pulp and the sugar. Okay. Let's get up to the seven. Now, here's, here's a big, you know, this cuts like a big swath now. We've come up to the 70s. This tequila sunrise certainly... It's not very popular, right? Like, not a lot of people know about it. It, like, it actually doesn't even appear in mo most recipe books for years after it's been invented. So, I mean, it's very hard to find this classic recipe, and it, it's, it just didn't exist. And, and one of the things that, that I use often as a reference, not so much for what it's telling me, but for what it's it's showing me has happened, is the Mr. Boston's Guide, because they update it about every decade, every eight years or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the thing is, is that they're one step behind what's actually happening, but it's a great reference if you look back. You can look through them and see how different it's like things history, but right. Excellent. Right. So in the 70s, um, rock and roll is uh, reaching its like kind of monster apex status. Well, this is late 60s, so yes, but yes, the, 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 the 
But go ahead. Okay, well, where I'm, <laughs> where I'm, where I'm going with this right. is, um, that's okay, that's good. Keep, keep me yeah. real. Um, down the road, now, the San Francisco sounds, there. San Francisco is uh, exploding in the late 60s. Um, Summer of Love, all that all stuff. All that's happening, but now we're getting beyond it, and a lot of the uh, pioneer rock and rollers have moved out of San Francisco, actually. They've crossed the bay, and the hippies started going back to nature, right? Where's the closest back to nature? It happened to be right here in Marin County, just across the Golden Gate Bridge. There's beautiful forests and hiking and mountains, and you know, pitch your Volkswagen bug up to my driveway, right. baby, and let's, let's have a party. So there's a there's a there's a town right across. Now the man cave, of course, is in Mill Valley, but the town directly across the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, the town that the bridge meets the land is Sausalito. Yes. Sausalito, very famous town. Yes. And Sausalito is a bastion of, of rock and roll. You've got David Crosby living on this boat down there. You've got the Kingston Trio. They own a, a nightclub restaurant facility there called the Trident where they play periodically. They book a lot of acts. You've got Bill Graham living around here. Dan Hicks. You've got, yeah, Dan, Dan Hicks, indeed. Yeah. Mighty Dan Hicks. Yeah. Um, You've got uh, Chet Helms who lives around, who lived around here. And uh, a lot of Steve these Steve Miller. Steve Miller, of course, yeah. Steve Miller, you've got the Jefferson Airplane, you've got Airplane, uh, living Janis Molinas, Joplin living Janis, here, you've got uh, Jerry uh, the Dead are Jerry up the here. Dead. Yep. The whole, I mean, and not just, I mean, they're living here. They're not, this is not just a place they're hanging out. They, right. they don't own homes here. And, uh, you know, so it, it was a very, very small microcosm of this great San Francisco scene. And of course, hippiedom, you know, they, they were smoking marijuana, right? I know. Jeff, shopping. what you talking about, <laughs> Jeff? Wait a minute. <laughs> But, uh, but at any rate, so uh, one of the things is that the marijuana was grown in Mexico. And so these people are bringing the marijuana north here, and they have this taste for this regional product. What could that be, Jeff? It's something made down there. Right? Uh, it? Tamuka, Toluca, <laughs> tele tequila, tequila, yes. Tequila, yes, 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 I remember that. And so rock, um, for rock and roll and tequila goes hand in hand. And this, this Trident mm -hmm. mm -hmm. restaurant here um, becomes the number one seller of tequila in the country, actually, and if uh, you know, I interviewed a, a bartender who worked there, a couple bartenders who worked there, and for a point that they were selling more tequila at the Trident restaurant than the rest of the country combined. Unbelievable! So it, that that's pretty. Can that phenomenal. really be? Yeah. So I mean, it, that was their drink. It was a big thing. It was a very popular place. You know, also, I, I'm going to interrupt you just for a second. The record, the very famous recording studio, the Plant, yes. is in Sausalito yes. too, which uh, famously went on. Uh, People recorded, like Stevie Wonder recorded Songs of the Key of Life there. Fleetwood Mac, Fleetwood Mac recorded Rumors there. Yeah. And on and on and on. So Sausalito, all right, so it's well, got... Well, ironically for the plant, too, they were uh, seized by the IRS for back taxes and run by the federal government for a few months, which is really, really kind of a funny story. But, uh, but this was right down the street from the Trident. So you've got basically Sausalito bookended mm -hmm. with, uh, with these things. And you've got, you know, you, like I said, you've got Grace Slick here. You've got Janis Joplin. They're all hanging out. You know, drinking down at the Trident. That's what they did. Well, let's play a little something from back in the day because one of the bands that ended up the Trident in about uh, 72 for their 72 tour of San Francisco, well, starting in kind of Vancouver into California, right, and yeah. then onto the uh, greater U.S., happened to be the Rolling Stones circa 72, like um, touring to support Exile on Main Street. Really? Yes. Exile on Main Street. So, the Stones end up at the Trident. Well, you've got to remember that in 72, 72 was the first tour of the, of the United States by the Rolling Stones since the, the ill-fated Altamont uh, concert, which actually was supposed to be held right up the street here in Sears Point and was moved within 48 hours, I believe, of the original event to Altima, which contributed to perhaps some of the problems that they had there. Remember, of course, the Grateful Dead played there, which was a bear, it was, which was a, a Marin County band, Santana, who of course still lives here, uh, yeah. also played there, Flying Burrito Ballers. Santana, yeah. <laughs> So at any rate, th this is their, their their return to the United States, and uh, and they they've been tax exiles in uh, in uh, in France, and they had just put this album together, and they they embarked on this tour starting in Vancouver, moving down the coast. Hey, this guy, <laughs> and, they uh, love you in the chat. They say you should be on Jeopardy. <laughs> 
And, uh, and so um, uh, Bill Graham brings them over to the Trident for this private party. And uh, they go into, the and into this private, they close the restaurant down, they call in one of their, bar their bartenders, Bobby Lozoff, and uh, he, he starts making them drinks, right? So it's the Rolling Stones, some of the prettier waitresses, no doubt, and, uh, and any of the hangers-on that, that were, uh, were traveling in this entourage. Now, rem <laughs> remember, this entourage was Truman Capote, Bianca Jagger, Zsa Gabor, uh, Dave Mart. I mean, it was on and on and on. It was, it was... Right. Now, hold on. I'm going to cut you up there okay. for a second, because that's perfect. Now, we're... So the Stones have arrived at the Trident, and there's a private party that Bill Graham is throwing. Now, before we go further on there, let's talk about the drink, because I want you to make that drink while we continue talking about okay. this. Okay. All right, so now there's a, the Tequila Sunrise comes back from, excuse me, Larry, is he the bartender? Uh, Bobby, Bobby Lozoff. Bobby Lozoff, still in Marin. Uh, no, he actually moved to Hawaii and, and opened the Blue Max. Which is a very famous nightclub over there. All right. He is now. I think he does computer programming. I wonder if he features a Tequila Sunrise <laughs> in that, that bar. Okay, so Bobby creates this drink. What's in a classic '70s Tequila Sunrise that we're all talking about? Well, one of the things that they did was they took this original version and they started to. You, you've got to remember the Trident was very cutting edge. They had sushi. They had a. They had a tea bar. They had an espresso bar. They had a juice bar. It was very hippy dippy, but very cutting edge. Things we take for granted now, like fresh squeezed orange juice, was that. That's where it started. Yep. Places like the Trident. The Trident was very far ahead. So of the completely time. ahead of the time. Right. Like fresh juices. So he's got. Right, so so Bobby's got all the mixins. Right. And what he does is he starts to strip away uh, ingredients from this. Uh, he starts to add ingredients and starts to mess around with this drink, right? Okay. This is a very busy bar. So what he ends up doing is creating a drink that's just tequila, fresh squeezed orange juice, and grenadine. Now, this is not the grenadine that we think of today. This is not your all natural. This is a, this is a, 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 a sugar, sugar flavored. Oh, Isn't that beautiful? look at that. It's like a nipple. It's it's a nipple on my sunrise drink. I, I want to, mm, if I were alone right now, you know, with that, oh, oh, yeah. Now, yes. now gild the yeah, lily. Yes! This is a tequila sunrise. Now, well, now, this well, is what most people are familiar with. Yes, they are. Of course, they probably aren't familiar with it with fresh orange juice, good quality grenadine, good tequila, mm. good cherries, and an organic orange. You put all that together. Oh, Fuck. Yeah. I'll tell you something else. This cherry is floating on top right where my nose is. So I'm getting the aromatics of the maraschino, but uh, I mean, go for that. That, that, that that's, well, and this I've is never a... had a tequila sunrise that tasted like that. Oh, I could drink that all day. Now, isn't this what Mick Jagger said? This is the whole thing? That is exactly right. Apparently at this party, Mick Jagger approached the bar and asked Bobby for a oh, margarita. God. And Bobby said, hey, why don't you try this uh, tequila sunrise? Next thing you know, they're off across the country. Mm. Drinking tequila sunrises. Keith Richards himself, in his book uh, um, Life, Life, quotes it as the tequila sunrise and cocaine tour. Now, oh, man. we're now doing the tequila sunrise part. <laughs> well, well uh, <laughs> don't tell him. <laughs> Jeff, what an amazing show. Thank you so much. We've been through. I'm going to have some more. So of this. many times. <laughs> <laughs> no, that one. This. Listen, I wish you could all be here to uh, to help us uh, down. We have about 25 drinks here that we've got to get through. And uh, well, like you said, I think that the the hit of the evening is this more the, the the more modern version. I mean, I like the the original. The the 70s one is a little cloying, but it is a classic. I mean, it it's undeniably a classic. And still, you know, still completely delicious. Yeah. But, uh, but there's a time and a place for a cocktail like that, where I think something like this is yeah. more more readily. Drinkable. It's I a think. completely. It, it's not as. Com it's not complicated. No, no. You made this Bellina Sunrise. Oh man, you know you gotta like immediately buy BellinaSunrise.com. <laughs> you gotta trademark that puppy. <sighs> Friends, uh, when you come up to Marin County, you're gonna have to look up Jeff Burkhart. You won't exactly know where he's working, but you'll find him. Is all I'm going to tell you. You'll find where he where he works and applies his art because there will be a Bellina sunrise i believe on the menu at some point indeed thank you thank so you very much, much for having me. what an amazing it. show we've learned so much and i've gotten such an appreciation